boards. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. Shift together here from the D-line. Now a play fake here on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. I think it's okay there they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. The former Gamecock here, this is Mike Davis. It's a loss of four. Now third down. So when you call a corner blitz, what a lot of teams call a cat blitz, you're expected to come after the quarterback. But in this case, he ran into the ball carrier. Really nice technique because what you do is you come deep as the deepest offensive player so he can't get outside of you. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Out of the gun, Locke. And this is caught by Watkins. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard at the 49. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll run with Davis. And some room to maneuver. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue? Just make sure you feed me the football. And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They go again with Davis. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. And with a play clock at three, we'll get a signal and a timeout on the whistle. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter.
QB split out wide now. They're in the Wildcat. Let's go. Now a direct snap back to Williams. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now Davis. And some room to run now. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. It's been a seven-play opening drive, and this is third and short. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. They go play action here on first down. A swing pass caught. A good pick up there, 26 yards. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Luck can do it all. I mean, he's an underrated runner, toughness in the pocket, strong and stout. But let's face it, the money, that comes from his arm. And smart, valedictorian of his high school class in Houston that he goes to Stanford. He's got it all. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On the carry, it's Davis. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Second and goal to go now. Here's Davis now. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Two runs, two one-yard losses. This is third and goal from the three. To throw is locked. And that is incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. So they get three. They were hoping for six. And unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy. But you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Throwing on first is Wentz. Escaping the pressure right. It's complete. This is Brent Salick. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. The clock running here, under a minute to go now in the first quarter of a 3-0 game. Now it's the former Ram. This is Todd Gurley. He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage. I really liked what he did there. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Throwing now is Wentz. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 46. Call it a loss of two on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Shotgun now for Wentz. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Nigel Bradham. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Coming up later tonight, a reminder, one of the best rivalries going. We'll have the Ravens and Steelers for you at 8.30 Eastern. And then tomorrow on Monday night, another divisional matchup. This time it's the Pats heading down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Nice two for there. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you're talking about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. <laughs> They'll run it now out of the gun. Shedding the tackler and it gives him some room. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 16 and the drive will continue. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. On first down, one. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he's gonna get it down to the 33-yard line here. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And his throw's going to be incomplete. 
You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Second down following the incompletion. Shotgun snap for Love. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. The Rams on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The Rams on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and 15. A handoff as they run the counter play. Trucks over him. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down. And they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down. But guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down. Really put them behind the eight ball. yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of four and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs and let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Here's Luck now on second down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Fletcher Cox breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the gun, here's Love. And this is caught on the sideline. But no, they'll say out of bounds. He caught it but was not in bounds. Incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. Now it's Zerline to try the Ram field goal. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will make it 6 to nothing. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Eagles. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, 
totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He lost four there, and it's third down. I enjoyed watching Robert Quinn in pregame warm-ups with you down on the field. Did it surprise you how tall and angular he is? You wouldn't think he'd be able to play against the run that well, would you? But he can, and he showed it right there, didn't he? That's that wrestling background he has. He understands leverage as well as anyone in the game. A big-time wrestler in high school. He didn't lose very often. Three-time heavyweight state champ in South Carolina. And that's caught by Smith. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back around the 37. They give him 12 yards and a first down. And the slot man goes in motion left. On first down, it's Gurley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I've yet to meet a wide receiver who likes to block more than catching the football, but the best ones understand that that's how they'll actually get more passes thrown to them if they help in the run game. And anytime you get a run of that yardage, that means the wide receivers did help. They get down to what a lot of people call the second level, the linebackers, or the third level where the defensive backs are, and they get out in front and put their bodies out there and create more space for their runners to gain the yardage. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. shift together here from the D-line. On first down, Wentz trying to lay one up deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Wentz will try again on second down. Flush to his right. Looking for Jeffrey, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Alec Ogletree. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. They run the counter now on first down. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Second down is locked. His throw incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You've got to cash in and get some points.
The Rams on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and 11. Back to throw, Lock. They got a man, it's Woods. A big 30-yard play on third. And yes, home is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. And probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining him on this stage. They'll run it now out of the gun. A gain of three, second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, an update from there. It's the Chargers out to an early lead, and we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here. here to his running back it's an eight yard pickup and it leads to a first and goal yeah once more strong running excellent blocking at the point of attack they've got a nice little drive brewing right here Now to throw. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Gerald Everett, his second touchdown on the season. And the Rams add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here. But I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Again, they run with Gurley, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. So we come upon halftime here in Southern California with the Rams on top as we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report. Here's Larry Ridley. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. By the way, they're into the second quarter now out in Carson. It's the Chargers out to an early lead. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. Quarter starts with a run by Gurley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 
12 yards there as they move the chains. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Gurley again here on first down. Looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So second and ten here. Working from the gun. Wentz. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Jeffrey with a catch left side. That goes for a gain of 31. They've really been able to contain Alshon Jeffrey. That catch, a rare exception in this game. And that's a feather in their cap because he's such a tone setter for his team on offense that they try and get him the ball early. And, of course, what comes after that is often. And for them to limit him and him not catch a ball until the second half, it's a big reason why his team is behind on the scoreboard. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Wentz now to throw. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Uh, they've been struggling in the passing game. Do you like the aggressiveness there? I mean, it worked on that play, but do you like it? I do because a lot of the time you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start to press up on you. Push them deep. Find some space and open things up again. Being aggressive there, I think, will pay off for them. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set them back for second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now Wentz throwing on second down. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, move the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. First and goal. They'll look to smash it in. And he's in. Broad Eagles touchdown. Todd Gurley, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Eagles have cut it back within a score. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now a first down throw, locked. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback. That's caught at the 25. Touchdown, L.A. Sammy Watkins 
His 11th touchdown of the year. And the Rams add on to their lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. But well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. Yeah, that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? Just go long, <laughs> man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Love. And he floats one there incomplete. They attempted to fade to the back corner of the end zone unsuccessfully. And I've been with you long enough, Brandon. I know that's not one of your favorite calls. Well, it's interesting. Before working with you, I always viewed that as you're just taking away space and you're trapping yourself in a corner, but you actually have told me they're trying to create space where space is not. Yeah, it's really a, it's a weird deal, isn't it? But you've got to just move that defender inside to create that separation and that little bit of space where there just isn't much. Wentz now on first down. Throw left side complete. That's Burton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. On first and 10, here's Wentz. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Wentz now on first down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second and short. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Second down, here's Wentz. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Calais Campbell with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. the gun. It's Wentz. Looking for Jeffrey and it's intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Johnson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are season in December. Of giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake, after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. And not much there at all, as he'll get this only up to about the 11. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Shift together here from the D-line. On second down, they'll try and run the counter. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now a play fake here on first down. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll bring up second down. 
So the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Fresh set of downs here. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Second down following the run. And he'll give it here to his running back. Shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when there's nowhere to escape and he goes down. Fletcher Cox in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And the gadget package there won't do much for him. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams out in front here. They've got control of the football as well as we get set for the fourth quarter. The Rams on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 17. After the run, Luck on a throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. They got the win last week despite not having any interceptions. Tried to come up with one there, could not. But there's a stat category called PBU, pass breakup. That's important, too, and they got one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because at least you're there knocking the ball away. Offense isn't possessing it, making plays downfield. And you just continue to harass the receivers, harass the quarterback, and maybe... The big play does occur down the road. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is what do the coaches decide to do now? 
having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. And he couldn't hang on. Would have been their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Back to the air on second down. Wins. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position. Couldn't hold on third down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Shotgun now for Wentz. And it's caught by Selleck. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A very solid gain of 27. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Smith will come in motion right. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Play action. Wins. Sliding out of the pocket. On the run, he'll let it go deep. Right sideline. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. go nickel here defensively on third to throw his wins and bringing it in this is Selleck over the middle to give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains and in a two score game obviously every play every third down like we saw there magnified big pickup it was a huge pickup what they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and can serve as much as possible. Throwing on first is Wentz. Flushed out right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Tremaine Johnson. A strong running. <laughs> I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit. And receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from yeah, him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open? Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. Try the right side here. And he'll running right through it. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And to give this time to the tailback. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12.
Now a handoff here to his running back across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. The Rams on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and nine. Now a play fake and it's locked. And he's got Moncrief. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. A handoff as they run the counter play. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. The Rams on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 11. Here's Luck. Going up top. This is caught inside the 15. They give them a gain of 37. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. Go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. It's a loss of four. Now third down. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. They'll run it now with Dunbar. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. 
Now a hit and a loose football. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. And careless with a football there on the kick return. And one thing I love about going to practices is trying to get around coaches and hear their catchphrases and what they really emphasize. We haven't been to a single one yet this year where a guy fielding a kick, you don't hear, tuck it away, yeah. tuck it away, tuck it away. And this time, they turned it over. Ball security eluded him. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if he picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to make second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. The Rams go victory formation as they take the knee. So locked down to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for the Rams, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to 8-5. and five. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, it's another week to forget as they're going to fall to 1-12 and 12 now on the year. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Rams are victorious here as we say so long from Exposition Park in L.A.